The Nikki Glaser Podcast. Welcome to the show. It's the Nikki Glaser Podcast. We are in Los Angeles, California. Um, it's a very special episode because we are actually doing an episode um, to honor the uh, women who take the mic. Um, I, I don't know if it's an initiative or like a special episode, but we're honoring women who take the mic. I'm taking this mic home with me. Uh, <laughs> I don't own it, but it's it's part of what the episode is about is that I get to keep this mic. And uh, what we're really doing is we're celebrating with iHeart for International Women's Day, which falls on Friday, March 8th. And it's International Women's Day is very important and uh, it's it's starting to catch on in America but it's like very important in other places. Brian, are you confused? Or what, What's no, going on? This doesn't say anything of relevance. <laughs> yeah. This is like ad reads. No, it, it does. It's on the bottom of the second page. Oh, Go to okay. the second page and you'll find oh, all I about see. it. Oh, I see. Women take the mic. Yes, yes we're course. taking the mic. And so for the special women's episode, we have a special woman guest. Yes. Holy and shit. I know she's a woman because she's fucking pregnant <laughs> right now. Oh, my God. Well, not all women get pregnant, though. I don't want to no, say that. they don't. That's not. Yeah. Well, there are some women who can't get Hashtag pregnant. not all yes, women. Yes, yes. Um, but uh, she is here with us today. I love her so much. She's, oh, I would consider you one of my closest friends. We don't hang out that much, but like, I just. I've never been more honored. I literally listen to your podcast. I consider you my best friend. Oh my God. Oh, I, I love you so wow. much. It's I Esther Pavitsky, everyone. Love you. Thank you. Hello. One of the funniest people ever. One of the most naturally talented, uh, just cool girls ever. I was just talking about how much I love you to someone because you just, imbo- oh, to Rick Glassman, actually, I was talking about mm. how you embody, uh, yeah, your nemesis. <laughs> I was really trying to sell you to him. He was, uh, he's still on the, on the fence, but um, I was just saying like, you're just so cool. Like you just like are who you are, which is like the best way to be as a woman is to just not try to be anything except what you are. And you are just, you're so cool. You're That's- like the coolest person I know. I, th- I think you're up there with a couple other people in my life that are cool, but like you are probably one of the coolest people I know. That is so nice. And I actually do believe you because you are so supportive and nice to me. And I look at you like this cool, popular girl. Like she's like the cheerleader. And I'm like, wait, why is she so nice? But like, I believe you. And also Nikki, thank you. I saw your set. Your stand up is so good. And even though it's basically a lot of it is like, completely fighting against what I'm currently doing with my body <laughs> like I am on your side yeah like I'm on your side with everything you you are and you're like you're very <laughs> pregnant right now are you eight months pregnant I'm eight months wow. yeah it's, it's, it's so embarrassing God, thank you for being here no don't it's, I saw you the other night at the comedy store and the, you got out of your car and my boyfriend and I were walking into the the store and you were getting out and you were like you just started laughing when you saw us and you were like, it's so embarrassing. It's so you're just embarrassing. You're waddling just... around. You're not a person anymore. You're just like a vessel. You realize mm. what it's, we're not equal to men. Like, it's just. Are you angry about it? Is there like, what? are you no. feeling empowered by this? Is no, it... I feel loving. Oh, like oh. I feel really loving towards the father of my child. Oh. Which I'm glad he's enjoying it now because once the baby comes out, I'm sure my hormones will go back yeah, to yeah. nasty girl. So things have changed. Like you have become more gentle, and I just feel really sensitive. Oh, and yeah. I'm like cleaning my house, which is weird. Whoa. I know. Oh I know. That's big for you. Maybe I need to get pregnant. I, I like it's. It took like eight months to do it. Yeah. pregnancy, but yeah. Um, You're just like nesting. You're getting the nest ready. Well, I have mm. no, not one single item purchased but i am cleaning just for myself i think are you i hate wait you're not ready not not even a little bit i hate pregnancy so much that i realize there's something going on in my brain where i'm like i'll just be pregnant forever like this is my curse yes (laughs) and i'm in denial and i haven't given a literal one thought as to what my life will be like when the baby comes well that sounds good because it sounds like you're living you're being present which is what we all aspire to i should plan though some people should plan (laughs) Well, that's like the one thing that's guaranteed not to last. Like sometimes people have migraines or like, what if this never goes away? What it like a stomach ache, like nausea or something like that. Could, but this will definitely. Get Pretty wild if it lasted longer than yeah. a few years. I don't know what pregnancy is like. It's but. bound to be over within a month. Wait, but is it messed up to put you on the spot though and ask where where is your head at on this subject? I'm really good about not having kids. <laughs> I really am like you're you're not the only person who's pregnant in my life Noah our producer who's not here with us right now because she's off getting married but she is um due in March I think May no April 
something around there. One of the months. Yeah, maybe next year, May. <laughs> I don't know, 2025. But um, she's also pregnant right now. My other friend, um, I have another friend who's pregnant. I'm hearing a lot about it. It sounds really hard. Bad. And I think I wouldn't be as like... Um, I think I would just be angry about yeah. the experience a little bit more. But. I really support your choice. Like I, and I always thought like, oh, if someone was pregnant and had a baby, like, why are they not trying to convince me to do it? And now I see why. I'm like, oh, like, because I for many years was like, I don't want kids, mm -hmm. and no one was ever like, you have to. Which I was oh, like, really? Yeah, I was like, oh, you're just gonna co close the conversation there. <laughs> um, but I kind of get it now. It's like. It's better. Life was better before so far. Yeah, it hasn't even started oh. yet. This is just <laughs> I'm excited. Oh, you know, you're gonna be such a good No, mom. it's gonna be great, but I'm just I get your point of view. How was yeah. it better before? I mean, the physical discomfort is like I could just go on and on. It's yeah. really, really challenging. And I'm a very selfish person. Like when the plane is going down, I no problem to put my mask on first. Like that <laughs> will never be an issue for me. And this is really a time in my life where like I'm not I cannot put myself first. Like I can't just get high. I can't just uh -huh. yes. like eat a big meal because my acid reflux will make me throw up. Like there's so Caffeine many comforts. Too, right? Aren't you you I'm da you're dabbling. Yeah, I'm yeah. dabbling. Okay. Yeah, I'm getting in Heroin. there. Heroin? Are you just Heroin dabbling? Heroin is safe. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Oh, I haven't yeah, heard anyone good. say you can't do it. I that's think, right. Um, it's not on all the lists that I see. I yeah. guess they just maybe assume you wouldn't, but <laughs> if they don't say no, I'm going to do it. Um, we do have to talk about women like in this segment. Generally. And I want to talk about, because we're celebrating International Women's Day, March 8th. Um, does this experience being pregnant make you really proud to be a woman? Like, are you learning how strong women are in the experience of it? Are you like having newfound respect for your mom? And and, and literally every, I, now that my friends are going through pregnancy, I was at the Super Bowl and I was looking at the thousands of people there and I was like, every single person here, there was a woman who was like, oh, <laughs> like for every person, like had someone had to go through a whole pregnancy and have a baby shower. It's mind and, blowing. And like have people touching your stomach in public. It's just like, it's amazing that there's a strong woman behind every idiot that you see at a stadium, <laughs> like <laughs> event. I do agree with you. And I also am totally seeing that differently. Like I'm, I'm respecting my mom more. I'm like, and all moms, because look, let's be real, moms are pretty lame. <laughs> They're pretty lame. If, if it, it's yeah. pretty lame to be a mom, okay? We all like know in that. General, what do you mean? Like, it's just mom, mom culture could it's really use a rebrand. Yeah, it really could. <laughs> like, it's, when it's like, like overlapping with Karen culture. A little bit. Yes. With what culture? Moms Karen. and Karens. Yeah, you have yeah. to be a That's mom a pretty much to be a Karen. Yeah. By the way, I love weed. I also think weed culture needs a rebrand. I think that's totally. embarrassing too. So it's yes. not just anti-mom, but like, so I've always felt, you know, mom culture is a little lame, but going through this suffering and struggling, I'm like, cause I really respect toughness in people yes. cause I'm so weak and I'm like, oh, hmm. this is you have to be really tough and like oh i'm just like oh my god every mom is so strong so tough like they just go through all this and i and like no one respects them for it no one cares we just roll our eyes when we our babies eyes. cry yes yes we're like get your tit out of here <laughs> like it's crazy <laughs> how Said we that so many times <laughs> <laughs> how we treat moms and then going through this i'm like oh i'm such a little bitch like i they are they women are great <laughs> yeah and you know what whether or not it's like the right decision for your life like once you make it you have to stick it out there's no like taking it back you can't yes. divorce your baby like they can divorce you at a certain age like macaulay culkin you but like you are <laughs> stuck with that it's like that is really strong to me to take a chance that this thing you don't know if you're good at yet you might have this instinct that i'm gonna be good at it but like you're doing this thing. Your husband can leave at any time if he wants. And like, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, he'll feel like a piece of shit his whole life, but he can like kind of run away from it. You just move on. You really can't as a woman. No, you're so trapped. I know it's, isn't it weird? Like, it's like, oh, she's trying to trap me. The only person who gets trapped in a baby making situation totally. is the woman. Yes. The mm -hmm. We got it all wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I, it's, it just is really impressive to me what um, women go through to ha to make another human um, and that's, I, 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 am too selfish to do it. I just, I, I thought you I'm would with be too. You. I'm with you on that. Yeah. I, I can't. I fell for this. I, <laughs> I really. Was it your idea? Uh, no, I think it was just, <laughs> it was like, it was like my baby daddy, who I guess is technically my fiance, whatever yeah. he is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's 45. And I was like, 
shit he would be a good dad i yeah. love him he was never pressuring me at all but i was like oh he'd be such a good dad he's his age is getting up there i'm like the only person that has a kid because like the man is getting old <laughs> but so i was just like let's just you know what else i was like let's just try Yes. Because it might not happen. Uh-huh. And then... And you just kind of want to see if you can. Yeah. Do yeah. you ever feel that? Yeah. You do? all the time. I just... I mean, I've had really awful thoughts that I can't say right now because it's going to air on the radio. But once we get <laughs> oh. to the podcast <laughs> segment of our I didn't realize show, it was going to be on the radio. Yeah. So Neither, we have to like, keep okay? it clean. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Everything's been but we great. We said tits. Is that fine? T- I think so. Um, I said so yeah, we might words. have to clean that up. We they might bleep it. Up. But that's okay. But um, yeah, I, I definitely have had thoughts of like, I just want to prove that I can do it because it it is so badass to be able to make uh, a baby and to, to have one. And it seems to be, and it's a, a sign that you're youthful. Oh, I, and your, I want your stand too. up yeah. about it is so funny. Thanks. Are you excited to, are you, do you know what you're having? Ugh, it's a girl. <gasps> hey. Oh my God, an international woman. I right know, now. future you're woman. One. Future. What, does, what makes you excited about having a, a girl? What makes you nervous? What, like, what's, did you want a girl? I would want a girl so Of course so I bad. did. Of course, yes. I know, when, when there are like gender reveals and the dads are always like so obviously bummed out when it's a girl. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm always just like, you idiot. This is going to be so much easier. I know, because the girl will love you. The little girl will love her dad like nothing else. Little boys are demons. Yeah. They're chaotic monsters that destroy your home and your body and your family. She might not be that cute. Let's be real. Oh, she's going to be so cute. But she's going to be smart. That's what I'm counting on. She'll be smart. Um, We're not like the hottest Jewish couple. Um, (laughs) But... I, so basically, so two years ago, I got pregnant and had a miscarriage. Mm-hmm. And so after that experience, I was this with this pregnancy, I was like, not thinking about gender at all. I didn't literally didn't cross my mind because we were just like, oh, my God, I, we just like hope it sticks, whatever. And then when I got the call and they're like, do we you know the gender? Do you want to know? And I had again, this whole time I hadn't thought about it. And she just goes, it's a girl. And I was like, it was like the best moment of my life. And I, li- my first thought was like, I should get out of this hot bath because you shouldn't take hot baths <laughs> when you're pregnant. <laughs> and I was just really happy. And I think I'm excited. You would have stayed in if I were a boy. You <laughs> turned up the heat. Well, Let's just see like... what Evie can handle this. <laughs> He's tough. He's a boy. Yeah. Um, that's so exciting. Yeah. To have a girl. And so, yeah. wait, so tell me. You're... I want to recreate my whole life onto it, obviously. Absolutely. I want to be a dance mom. Well, okay, so mm. what do you wish for her? What do you uh, like? I, what's what I, do you want her to be like? What what would you like? What are things that you want to do re- redo for her and not have her experience? Or what are things that you what? Uh, yeah, what do you want for your daughter as a I woman in this world? Just want to have my own life too. Is that a really bad answer? No. I. She, you want to set an example of yes. a woman who can have it all? Well, we all know that we can, no one can have it all, no. right? Is that have we busted that myth yet? I don't mm-hmm. know. You can't. There's no way. But Hillary I, Clinton. I wanna. <laughs> she did it. I want. I don't think she did. I think she famously didn't get it all. <laughs> she got it all. <laughs> I want her to have a da- a very close relationship with her dad, so that mommy can still go tour. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I wanna. You wanna still be able to tour? Yeah, I think it's such what a does cool dad look. Do? He's a writer. Okay, so he stay he stays put. Kind of, yeah, uh-huh. yeah. He stays put for the That's most part. That's great. Yeah. I would want to keep touring too, and I and I would. Remember yeah. Bonnie McFarlane used to bring her baby yeah. like, to the comedy clubs, and she grew. She's so cool. She's such a cool child. I definitely like. I don't want to become a person who is just like a mom 24 seven and is Mm -hmm. like entertaining and like I read on Reddit a lot these like moms that are like I'm so bored I'm just playing baby games all day I'm like that regretful parents I (laughs) subreddit don't go on that one (laughs) really dude that's I frequent that one to like help myself oh I need to look at that to prepare myself no 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 I do not it's all people who (laughs) wish they could Casey Anthony but can't you know what I'm saying like it's all people that have that same mindset of like why did I do this why aren't I free like I regret this please don't do this so I would not recommend going on I'm gonna it's just it's just for people like me who need to like not be not do it just because they're feeling pressure and so they need to be I think that what I scared. am doing my mindset is I'm going to this with very low expectations I'm fully like I might hate this I'm not the kind of person that always dreamed of being a mom I'm, it's more of like an experiment and look if grandma and grandpa have to move out here and take 
the lead. They totally are going to. That's going to have to. That's that, great. You'll, you love backup your parents. Plans. In case I'm a Reddit regretful parent, yeah. we have backup plans. <laughs> yeah, you Where do they live? Here to Chicago, you're chill. but okay. we'll work hard and get them a house out here. Sure, We're sure. Gonna I really... love that you have no, you're you're not prepared for this at all. And some like that. <laughs> I love it. I love that you're just like, uh, these are my favorite types of parents. The ones that are just like, yeah, we'll see. We'll figure it out. Because you really will. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No one really knows what People they're doing. People figured it out in the woods. Yes. People had Nothing but rocks and sticks, and yes. they still survive. We're all here. Yeah, I mean, you are very close with your parents. Like, very. did they? Do you feel like they parented you, or like put thought into raising you, or was it just kind of like not really? Yeah, me either. I look back, and I think that's probably why I'm a comedian and have <laughs> low self esteem is because they didn't read the books that they should have. Someone has a great joke about like. Someone said, like, you know, they don't write. The, someone's mom had said, like, you know what? Sorry, I messed up with you. There's, sorry, there's not a book on how to be a good parent. It's like, no, there's many. <laughs> you could have read so many. But yeah, I think that, um, no, I think uh, they raised me to be smart and confident and like really believe I could do anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that's really important. Yeah. But I think I know how to raise. Like, uh, uh, like I, I could make a Taylor Swift if I had a, a child. Oh, really? Do you want to know how to raise yeah. a, a daughter that is lock them in it? a room with a guitar and so you yeah. can't eat yeah, until you can play? That's true. Well, that's the North Korean way. Yes, but um, there's other there's they, other ways. North Korea should write a book if yes. they were allowed to read them. They should. Um, but Only uh, the men, no, it's just you have to make them believe that everything they do is not perfect, but with enough hard work, it can be, and that you're capable of hard work. You might not be the most talented at this thing, but you know what you can do is you can always work hard. You can work harder than everyone else because that is something that like kind Wait, of- did your parents teach you no, that? No, but I figured out myself. I I I was not talented growing up naturally. Me I wasn't either. I wasn't a natural at things, right? I relate to you with that. Weren't you like sure. a dancer and stuff? Yeah, but that's hard work. That's not okay, talent. You, yeah. You weren't just like na- yeah. No, a I took a million classes and yes. worked my ass off. Yes. Like I'm totally with and you that's on what the I not think talented. <laughs> kids need to be told they're like everyone's like you're special and then you, when you're a little girl you start to see people have natural talent or have natural looks and you just think like I I should just give up and I just keep looking for something that I have a knack for. And thankfully I found comedy, which I did have a knack for, but if I wouldn't have found that, I would have felt like a huge failure. Mm. But what I wish someone would have told me early on is like, you're not good at singing right now. You're not good at dancing or all these things that you want to be good at, but just work really hard and you can be as good as anyone else. That's just born with it. I absolutely. And then you need to be told you're amazing at everything. Like you are so like, you're so great. And like, we support you no matter what you do. Failing is such an important part of the process. Like no judgment. No, like, why did you do that? None of that bullshit. Just all, none of that BS, just all, um, just everything's okay. Failure is a part of the process. It's good. You need to fail. Oh my gosh, thank God you failed at that. Do you know why? You, because that girl got that and you didn't, you're going to be better off because of it. I feel you're gonna so be, healed listening to this. Yes. I just know that that's, that's the ticket, man. And you for, can't be cool in high school. Oh that's yeah. The, that's a big mistake. You got to get it. If you're cool in high school, your whole life's going to be shit. Well, you know what? I, mean, I also crap. think on like similar to that is if you get all the, well, this is just me talking shit about people I went to high school with, but like, the people who got the leads and the plays like all the time really easy. Yeah. Then they kind of, they like go out in the real world and they. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I know, I yeah. know where they are. <laughs> they can't They're... handle the rejection and they quit. Yes. But you and me, we were losers. We were getting rejected <laughs> in high school <laughs> and we didn't go to performing arts high schools. Yeah. Like right. we were like not up against the, the best. <laughs> but you don't want to be a loser we either. You don't want to be a loser. You got to be in the middle somewhere. Because yeah. if you're a loser, a if you're spot. too low, you're yeah. not going to be able to climb out of that hole in time. Yes. But if you're so cool and you're surfing all day and everyone's trying to have sex with you in high school, you're going to fail. You're going to. You're going to be a loser adult. No, but that, think They're about the quarterback. Losers. Think about Mahomes and the well, Kelsey. If, if you they can make it to the NFL, it. if you can make it onto Broadway, then that, then you're different. Yes. But for all the regular people, yeah. you don't want to be the coolest regular person in high school. No. Well, I want to ask you about this. you end up working at the bar in because town. Actually, I could actually ask you, like, you seem like someone, you're, you just... I want to phrase this in a way that doesn't sound like it's like a backhanded compliment because I hate the way some people can say these things and it sounds the opposite of what I want to say. I don't You mind. are so admirable. You're so cool. And I think your coolness and, and beautiful and just, I just it, watch you and I just like, I'm kind of in love with you. And I think it's because, and you're so, you don't, you're not trying to be anything you're not. Like you're interested in like cool things and pretty girls and wanting to be that, but you seem to have, you're not like mad at yourself for not being the things that you aren't. 
Whereas I feel like I internalize a lot of that. Like, why was she born with that and not me? And like, I must be bad because I don't have that thing. And it like, it, it eats, it, it eats up, it corrodes my soul when I get jealous. And you don't seem, you can admire things without being mad that you aren't them necessarily. And you can still exist among these people and therefore be as cool as them. This is interesting because, okay, as a comedian, don't you sort of feel like, all of the things about you that are like flawed and messed up and like maybe even negative and just not like those get you from point A to point B in the career of comedy. Like when yeah. I go on stage, like my breakthrough moment in like an open mic in 2009 was just going on stage and being like, I have a yeast infection yes. and like <laughs> monologuing about that. Yes. And then that being the best that I had had in my first year of comedy, <laughs> there was no jokes in it, but like, I just find that this flawed version of me when I'm just honest is like the best case scenario. It's like it gets me what where I want to be, what I want. And like I'm if I was trying to be something I'm not, I would fail. Mm. Yes. Oh, OK, I see what you're saying. Like, don't you? Yes. You must relate to that because you go Absolutely. up there and you do it. And But I don't think I, I, I consciously have thought about it that way of like, oh, whoa. Just this, being this you. Being when I like stop trying to be someone else and I'm my weirdest, most authentic version of myself that I might be really ashamed of when mm. that slips out because I just don't have the defenses for it anymore or out of desperation or just some moment on stage where you're like, yeah, I've had that moment on stage where I go, I got HPV. Like I like, and I just tell a whole room of people I have HPV, including this girl who I know hates me and would love to know that about me. But I, and I like gave her that, but I felt like I owned it. Now, like, you know, I have HPV because I told you I good luck care. gossiping about it. I was the one who announced it to a room of people. Yeah. Like I, that has, yes. When I'm able to stop trying to be anyone else and lean into the weirdest things about me, um yeah it, it, it does always yeah like, that is my ticket I admire you so much like if there was anything different about you you wouldn't be Nikki Glazer and like we need Nikki Glazer but then there's the times though Esther where you get like yesterday I got so many compliments on like you look so pretty because I, I come from a photo shirt early in the day and so I was like fake eyelashes on all day hair extensions all day I just left my makeup you know spray tan and the compliments come like you just get more attention from girls, guys, like everything. It feels so nice. And it just is like more indicate. And it's not me. I, this was literally not done by me. I can't do what this is. And yet I'm getting all this love that I've always wanted. So it's like it reinforces to me like, no, that stuff is important. You're getting this attention that feels really good. It makes you feel good. And I can't even, you know. But just because it makes you feel good and gives you attention doesn't mean that it's important, you know? Okay. Like, and also, don't you ever look in the mirror when you're just in your sweatpants and you have no makeup on and you're like, I look so good. Like, yes. But so, I do need a spray tan. <laughs> you don't. I can be makeup free without a spray tan. And that, but I'm just saying those moments where I go, I look good without makeup, they, they happen, but I do have a spray tan when I have them. <laughs> and if there were permanent, permanent spray tans to get, I would get one. A hundred percent. I keep dreaming about this thing where you can like a take tattoo. a pill and it will like turn your skin orange. Could eating carrots do that? I think it does. I... I've seen that on okay. TikTok. Oh, yeah. wow. How many carrots? But a, a lot. lot. I think you have to eat like three a day. I used That's to eat a lot many. of carrots when I was like, like anorexic three... and I did get a little orange. <laughs> you just, just look it? sick. Three carrots? No, three whole carrots a day. Yeah, that seems not, like a, it's that kind seems of annoying. Reasonable. I yeah. do want to compliment you though that you do spray tans and not regular tanning because so many people are still out there and using the tanning That's beds. That's crazy. I know. So good on you. Well, I'm too vain to do yes, regular great. beds. Love that. That's Love crazy. to hear that. <laughs> Love to hear it. Okay, we're back. So my favorite woman in the world uh, is obviously Taylor Swift and she's had the most amazing year uh, as a woman out there killing it more than anyone's ever killed it ever. So and, cool. Um, Setting the best Time example. Magazine Woman of the Year. Hardworking, mm. friendly, nice. Like now she's dating a guy that she used to kind of hide her relationship. Now she's dating a guy. She's just like herself out. Like Taylor Swift is at a party at the Super Bowl, just hanging out amongst people. People are filming her constantly. She's keeping her composure. She's so cool. I'm going to see her three times in the next uh, week. I'm going to Australia randomly for my boyfriend's friend's wedding, and she happens to be there. Everyone's nice. like, oh, she happens to be there. I like, no, I didn't like get this, get the wedding scheduled. I had no, the, yes, she, it's a coincidence, but I'm going three more times. We went together. Three? It was so fun. And I can't believe you're going three more we times. We went to, at SoFi over the summer. And, um, and that's what I loved about you. 
Okay, so you go to this is this is Esther for you go to the Swift Taylor Swift show and you know it's like a whole event. You have to like dress up for yeah. it. It's like a big thing. And she is just wearing her cool um pull off like Adidas, like button up <laughs> blue Adidas stripe pants with like sneakers and a black shirt. Like she looks like she's going to a boy genius show. <laughs> and she's and, but everyone's decked out in sparkles and I'm wearing a ridiculously you sparkled so dress. Good. I it was, was so funny. happy to be but on I was your like, arm. I love that you just didn't, like, if I were you in that moment, like, I, and I wouldn't have been because you're the coolest person ever, but I would have been like, oh no, I didn't dress right for the, like, I would have been so, you just don't even care. You're but, like, so weird that you're like that. You're, because you're that a sounds star. like I'm being a, a brat right now. I want to call out myself like, I'm doing the thing of like, I love how you dress. You just don't care what people think. I'm no, not I doing that it. right now. It's the best compliment. You are, you are, you do look cool. Like, I... I think you always look cooler than everyone else. And you're so pretty. This is how I feel about you. Oh, remember? Yeah, we do this. We do this all the time. Also, remember the People's Choice Awards, which you t- were so generous to take me yes. as your date. Literally, Nikki shows up in like five inch heels. I'm in flats. Our height difference is already <laughs> not great. I literally look like a miniature person next to you. <laughs> and we're just like, we're, we're getting pictures together. I <laughs> love that so much. I know. Yeah, it was this like event that I spent thousands of dollars to get dressed for and I needed to I was like gonna be in it I was presenting or whatever so it was necessary but like you just you roll up so and you good. were like you just put it together you look so good without having to put in all of this effort and I just love I love being around you because it you first of all you celebrate the women in your life so much you're just like you're tr- tried and true a girl's girl and That's I don't so nice now, what is a girl's girl Mm. I think, okay, is it kind of like you're into girly stuff and you love your girlfriends and you love to like, I don't know, is that's it, right? I th- n- To me, it means a girl that you know isn't going to be threatened by you and you're not going to be threatened, like you, mm. like, oh. I think that's it. It's a girl that you know is not going to get weird around you because you... Oh my God, that's so niche. Mm. It's really hard to find that. It is. A girl's girl to me is like a guy's girl. What do you uh, mean? Okay. A girl's girl oh. is a girl that hangs out with all the girls. And is, if it's not threatening to anybody, then she also could probably hang out with the guys without being threatening to them. Yeah, probably. I was thinking that more too, but the definition that you're giving is I just, I know we're just doing compliments, but like that is part of like the huge reason that I'm drawn to you is because there's none, this is a very competitive business. It's yeah. very hard. Like every, all genders, everyone's competitive, but like, you are like there is just none of that with you and I feel so safe with you like Aww. I feel like I could like we could tell each other the best news about ourselves and yes. there was like no one they would just would not be weird yes absolutely. I feel this same I feel this girl's girl romance with you absolutely like so I'm actually really glad you brought that up because I and I'm like what is I don't know what makes some wait what makes you feel that way or w- why you can have that with certain people but I'm just very grateful and th- you are a true girl's girl. Well, thank you. I, I've, I've, I think that I am. I really love my female friends. I love women so much. But it, you know, and I've talked about it a lot on this podcast. I do get threatened by other women, especially women who are female comics who are hilarious. And you know, sometimes I'll see a clip of yours and be like, "Why is she so much funnier than me?" And I'll get like, "There's a, a moment of like, how? Why am I not that funny? And why didn't I think of that angle for that kind of thing?" And I, I start going in my head, and then I'm just like, "I'm just like so glad I get to witness this and like." be friends with there's a a split second of of that like anger of like why am I not this I want this to go away it's too good and now because you're my friend it's 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 a blink of an eye that goes away but there's some people who aren't my friends and I can get very threatened by other women and I want you know in years past I would want to silence them or like Mm -hmm. please just go away like I'm not going to promote him and I think in the past year and a half maybe two years and I've talked about on the podcast I make a conscious effort now when I get jealous you don't get to be jealous. If you're jealous, Nikki, you have to post about them. You have to spread the word. Wow. Oh. That, you have to do the opposite action. Like, if you want them to go away and you want, like, to, if you see a clip of some girl that's really funny that threatens you, you got to post it. That's amazing. You Look have at to how do it. bold and brave you are to do that, admit to that. Like, that is so cool. Because I should want, I want to compete against the best. I want mm. people to be comparing me to this girl because I want to be, on, this is going to push me to be better because I'm in, I'm inspired by this. Why why be sad that I'm not as good at this? Why don't, why don't I take this and go like, why don't I find a way to be as, because usually I'm just jealous of authenticity is what I'm like, because that's kind of what I, de- I dabble in. Uh-huh. And so when I see it's other girls careful. finding a way to be 
that in a new way that I haven't. And I go, oh man, why didn't, why can't I be like that? Uh, and, and instead I just go, okay, how can I find a way to, to rip that joke off? No, <laughs> how can I find a way to be that? So, but it's really helped me. And then the other thing is, and this is maybe not the best thing, I will mute if I'm feeling too yeah. triggered because mm. I mute a lot of, of people because sometimes as a woman, we are, we do compare ourselves to each other. We we do live in a patriarchy where there isn't space enough for us all, where men, you know, judge us by if we're bangable enough and <laughs> that's, and there's only, and when we aren't anymore, it's kind of, we feel like we have to f- find some other identity to get attention. It's like a very scary world out there and there does seem to be like not enough space for all of us. And so- to protect myself from going down those rabbit holes when I do feel too sick in the head, I will mute. I think that's and absolutely it's so good. like it's it's crazy to even consider not doing that. Like there will be times where I'm scrolling and whatever it is, I'm like, oh, that person's annoying. And I'm like, what? That that's not their fault. It's my fault for being here. I'm like, yes. put the phone down, mute them or just get off for an hour, whatever it is like get out of that because we don't I don't have no one's making me look at someone else's stand-up clip or photo like yes that's I'm doing I'm doing that to myself yes and so I think any tools like muting just putting it away that's what that should be the standard it really we shouldn't be subjecting ourselves to shit that's just making us mad and the truth is you think that when you mute something that you've made maybe you've been obsessed with some certain person maybe it's like an ex-boyfriend or an ex-boyfriend's new girlfriend and you check it all the time and you think well nikki if i mute it i'm still gonna i'm gonna go to her on my mm-hmm. other account or if i block her or whatever you don't you have, it's amazing how if you don't see them on your feed that you truly forget they're alive after a while like it actually works and i would never have thought it works but it really does it does this is why advertising works it's the opposite of ad you take Mm. it away you don't see it you forget yes it's like a magic trick and we we just like beat ourselves up we're like i'm obsessed with this but it's we're not we're just in like this habit loop that we can just get out of by like taking thoughtful action and changing it yes uh, that this is you know my favorite kind of women are the women who are vulnerable who are open about what they struggle with or you know admit to their privilege like just admit anything about themselves that they're a little bit ashamed of i love yeah. that and um and bringing taylor swift back into it because sometimes with taylor i can get into these things of like she's so freaking perfect like i just zoom in and i look for a crow foot <laughs> a crow toe I look for anything and there's nothing. She's just every inch of her skin. And I go, there's not, so there's no beautiful. way this was Photoshopped. This is just a, an image that just came from Getty like two seconds ago. No one put this through anything. This is her. She's just so perfect. The way she speaks, the way, like, even when she does, there's like a whole clip of, um, it's like the errors tour, but it's called like the errors tour. And it's like all of her mess ups and every mess up she has, which is minimal are all adorable and like a little slip here and there. Cause it was like slippery. Like none of them are her fault of being like unprepared. She's truly a perfect person uh, f- for my definition of the word. And sometimes I can feel triggered by that, but then, you know, she releases a song like, um, mirror ball or anti-hero that talks about how she has depression, how she compares herself, how oh she gosh. doesn't feel like she's enough, how she has, she feels like she has to keep working because she's never been a natural. All she does is try, try, try. Like, And, uh, you know, that, that really, I love that no matter how much I project perfection onto people, there's always another story to it. I agree with you. Also, Antihero is my favorite song in the world ever. And I know it's like, yes. duh. It's no, no, no. That's, it's... It's, it's an amazing song. It's so good. But what I wanted to say was I found myself this past year because you're like an OG Swifty. I was always more of like a Gaga, like a Brady, yeah. Casey we saw Musgraves, her egg. Lana. Wait, say that again? We saw her egg. We were Lady Gaga's egg that she came out of on the MTV Movie Awards. Where we were in, it? Vegas in Vegas this past weekend. Oh, and it was that's like, right. There's a Lady Gaga yeah. museum story. Yeah. At the MG, or at the I love Parking Lady Gym. Gaga. I mean, I talk about... A we gotta go see her bold, when amazing she's back. Yes. In the, in and, the... and we saw Britney together. Let's not forget. Yes. In Las Vegas. Yes. Esther and I went to go see wow. Britney in Vegas. Britney, Taylor, and Gaga? Yeah, during her cage tour. Wow. <laughs> oh, <I laughs> she, she was in an egg, too, but it was... Um... But so, like, I'm a pretty newer <laughs> Swifty. Like, I... You know, the Eras tour obviously got me like all in. Mm. And I have to say, like, all of a sudden, I'm like, oh my God, she's the most beautiful woman on the planet. But I never (laughs) thought that. And I'm like, oh, this is so exciting. I actually now know I find her so perfect and beautiful physically because of 
like what I know about her and her art. Yes. So it's not her face. It's not her body. It's not her perfect red lip. It's like who she is, what she has to say, how she moves through the world and influences us all in such a positive way. Like that really is impacting how I literally see her with my it's eyes. It's like when you fall in love with someone and they yeah. can be, and by the way, she's just without question, like just a, a, she is a beautiful person, yeah. but, but I have fallen so deeply in love with her looks even more so mm -hmm. because I have an intimacy with her now, right? Because like she has shared so much in her songs that I feel like I know her. People, people who like make fun of Swifties for being for having parasocial relationships with her, d you don't get it because you don't listen to the music and you don't understand what sh this woman has shared with us way more than any artist that you might love has shared with you. Like people don't understand if they don't know her discography, like how intimate she can get. And it's almost like you know when you like have a crush on someone, you're like, I don't know if I really am into the way I'm attracted to them, and then you get to know them. And they're so hot to you. Yeah. Yes. It is that with her. If you fall in love with like a I'm disgusting hag, you can be attracted to them. Yeah. Yeah. It but all she, just switches. It, it. She can be. Yeah. It's. It really is that. Like it's I. What's on the inside that counts? Yeah. And we're proving it today. <laughs> is it, that's when I always. That's the one thing I always question. I'm like, is it? But it kind. No. It, what's it on really the inside is. counts, but that just changes your perception of the outside. Yeah. So really, it's the outside oh, that true. counts. Wait a second, though. I just realized something. Like. Being hot on the outside is so much work, but we haven't talked about like being hot on the inside is maybe more work. Mm. Yeah, and it's you don't think about that often because we just assume it comes naturally to people, yes. but it probably doesn't. It's and being hot effort. on the inside is just yeah. being yourself and being unapologetic about it, but like, and not like, I'm just gonna sit however I want, or you know, I don't care, <laughs> I'm gonna listen to my phone on speaker, and I don't care, mm. you know, not like unapologetic in that way, but like just. Being 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 okay with who you are is so hot, and, but it's so hard to do. I would think it's it's harder than getting all the laser facials and all mm -hmm. the plastic surgeries and all the Pilates classes. It's 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 been a way harder endeavor for me to be um, hot inside than outside. But there's there's so many great examples of women who are embodying that and like are just um yeah that's what I, I just I want to keep pursuing that do you ever like I because I, I absolutely relate to how you're what you're explaining like looks are obviously very important to me as well like I want to be cute I want to feel good when you look good you feel good when you feel good you do better you know at everything but do you ever wake up and you're like like maybe you had a little insecurity about your looks whatever it is or you know anything and then you're like Oh my god! I'm so glad I'm a comedian. Like, yes, because like the thing that I do is not about my looks; it's mm -hmm. about my mind. Yes, but uh, I swear uh. that um, I do feel grateful that I'm a comedian all the time because of what you're just saying. Like it isn't about my looks, but there is a secret part of me because I came up and I was billed as like a young, cute comic, even though I never felt cute. It was part of my branding. And so that is something that mm. like I felt like did whether I wanted it to or not got me on shows, got me attention early on. And so that is something that I do feel is part of my appeal. And when that goes like, well, people know I'm not really talented. But the truth is that the more it goes when I age, much like I'm talking about, like I need to do the inner work because, yeah, my looks are fading. I'm approaching 40. It's it's going to be downhill. Yes, I'll get more distinguished looking and cooler looking and just more rugged <laughs> looking rugged. And, like, yeah. and like, like all the good things that come with age, more wisdom in my eyes and all that bullshit. <laughs> mm -hmm. It will I do have to amp up other things. Like I am working harder on my stand up because I don't have my looks to fall. I can't Girl, be just cute. Too. Like I <laughs> we, do, we you just have to. And we're getting older. We're not as tapped into what the younger generation's doing. Like as you get older, you just have to try harder. You have to work harder to achieve the same thing. So I think I'm just it's making me focus on the more important things that I, I can control. Totally agree. And I'm actually loving this step and direction for myself so much more. Like I still look, I love makeup. I love all the girly girl things. But in my 20s, I was a little more into like finding the perfect highlighter and the perfect blush tone <laughs> yes. for my skin. And it's like I spend a little less time on that now and a little more time on like, how do I really feel about this subject that I want to do a bit about and testing it? And, and this version, which might seem sadder because it's like just about being uglier and older. Yeah. 
It's better. I like it better. I'm it, not just saying that. If you didn't have to worry about your looks, like what could you do? Like if it was really mm. not a concern at all, like what could you do? What, that thought what? actually just like scares me. It's just not even like <laughs> conceivable to me <laughs> to like pack for shows and not bring the heels and the dresses and the spray tan and all the things. And people say you can just give that stuff up and not worry about it. And like, yeah, try, try it not wearing makeup on stage. And it's like it will be. It will be a thing if I don't. I have to ease into not wearing makeup. I also I just, wouldn't want to walk away from that because it's so fun. I do like doing it. Yeah, like it's it's fun to feel good about yourself, and there's no shame in it. Like, cause so I'm, like we talked about, I'm eight months pregnant, and the first three months of the pregnancy, first trimester, just absolute misery. Couldn't get out of bed. Like just everything was yucky to me even my dog food aversion oh. like my food. friend is having the hardest time being pregnant it's with food sucks she is nauseous all the time but she can look at a pile of blankets that look like food seriously these other day, the other day she sent us pictures of blankets on her couch and she was like it just looks like a pile of food and we were like what this like blanket like she's sick sickened by everything literally like i will be in bed i would be in bed and then dave would be on a different floor in the home putting a drop of oil in a pan and i'm like how dare you <laughs> yes it's me you're me you're trying to kill me it's so nauseating oh my but my point is is like after being like in three months of just not feeling myself at all all i craved was like i wanted to feel pretty i wanted to like and and why that's okay with me like wanting to feel pretty and get cute or whatever is because it's all up to me and how I feel. Like the makeup that I do, if I like it and I then I feel good, I'm the judge of it. Yeah. I, it might look, to, it might, someone might get a picture of it. It looks really bad and no one else likes it. It's all on me. If I feel good about it, then like that's awesome. And so like when you do your shows, when you're on tour and you put your outfit on and your heels and your makeup and you feel so good, that's there's nothing wrong with that. That's there, You're awesome. so right. I struggle though. The other night I was in Vegas and I got this really cute red corset top that I wanted to wear to one of the, like the Chiefs events because it's like red <gasps> and I wore it with these like high waisted pants. It was so cute. And then I wore like I got a I needed a blazer for it, so I went and got a blazer from Zara and it just like was this cute outfit. And then I was walking around this casino and I got asked, I'm not joking you, twice in a row of like where the bathrooms were. Oh, People no. thought I worked there. And I felt so, it like it took me out of it so much. And my boyfriend's laughing. And my boyfriend notoriously doesn't like blazers on woman, women. He's like, I don't know where women, I've never once mm. seen a blazer on a woman Mickey and thought blazer. that was like a good <laughs> look. And that, whenever I wear a blazer around him, I feel, even though I feel, him, and, and I tried to do the thing of like, well, I like it. That's what I do with my, with mm -hmm. Dave too. But I gotta be honest, it felt a little bit, I wasn't as excited. I'm like, I know I'm turning off my boyfriend actively right now. It doesn't. So I don't know if this is good enough for me, even though I just kept being like, well, I like it. You, you'll check yourself. And he's yourself. like, it's fine. He goes, no, like you shouldn't dress for me. It's not like every woman shouldn't wear a blazer because I don't think they're good looking. I just never have seen one that makes me think that that's like a good look for a woman. And I'm like, I get it. Like <laughs> it, it, but that stuff that sticks in my head now. And now I'm like, oh God, every time I now, if I wear a blazer around him, I'm like, it's a sign of like, I don't want to have sex with you. It's like, mm. that's that's how I feel what I'm saying. Like, he's not gonna be attracted to me. And that's important. Like being attractive to men yeah. is still important. It's yeah. like, and that's but I okay. do agree with you that it is, it feels good to feel good about yourself. But I, I recently like went a little darker with my hair color because I'm tired of getting my hair done. That's the thing that I'm like, you know, I've been complaining about it for um, years of my life of like every every six weeks I have to sit somewhere for four hours with someone I don't want to talk to. Oh, I know. That's how I feel mm -hmm. about And nails. sit in this lighting and stare in a mirror and this horrible lighting with this, these magazines that are just like all they have is like Ma Vogue and people, just magazines that uh, are w filled with people that are hot. And you should be able to select conversation preferences like on Uber. <laughs> oh my God, yes. I never, by the way, ever click. No, I like, feel like they're going to hate me. I know. I never click Oh, it. I do quiet. You do? Yeah, and sometimes they give you shit. They go, I hear, oh, so I see that you don't want conversation, and I just go, mm -hmm. oh. oh. my God. Yeah, that's what yeah, I think is going to happen. That's it. what I'm avoiding. But then I do have a long Sorry, conversation. Sorry, it's an option. I'm doing it. Wait, but your, like, piercing icy blue eyes with dark hair would be so sexy. Okay. Mm. Like, I could see okay. that being so hot. All right. 
There's something going on there. I think it might be the blazer of hair from my boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll Wait, see. Speaking of a blazer, um, <sighs> my thing is like every two weeks I'll be in the car with Dave and he'll be like, is that like glitter on your face? And I'm just like, no. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, it just accidentally got there. You know, hates, I just spent $27 yeah. on this little <laughs> tube of it. Yeah. Yeah, they like hate it. Like, they hate glitter. <laughs> they just, any like obvious effort mind like glitter. that. You don't mind glitter? Really? No, I don't mind glitter. There's a lot of things I do mind, but not glitter. What do you mind? You might just not know what glitter is. No offense. Like, okay, yeah. like shimmer. <laughs> Uh, maybe I don't know what glimmer, I, what shimmer. I don't yeah, know what this is. I feel like guys don't really know it. Oh, yeah. so when I, I know when I see it. Yeah. I don't like really. I don't like lip injections. Yeah. Like really, yeah. especially if they're really big. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, I don't like really heavy makeup. Mm-hmm. I think. Um. I don't like uh big scars. <laughs> Um, I think scars are bleeding so cool. ulcers. Yeah, that, that, those are so in right now, though. <laughs> Remember when the uh, like a, you wearing one. a band aid was in? Like the kids yeah. were putting on a band aid with forehead. no injury. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Is that still cool? Yeah, yeah. I think now you can do pimple patches like out star and about. Face. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What's that's that? cool. Star Man. face is like the coolest thing. Even Gen Alpha is like we're making this work. They just wear little pimple patches and they're cute, and so it's like. Look, I'm showing off that I have acne and not covering it up. That's awesome. I know. It's oh cute. my God. Does acne need like a rebrand? Yeah, it's it got it. Cool. Yeah. Because it's so unavoidable. It's so just, it doesn't mean any, it, it makes you feel like you look dirty or that you're doing something wrong, but it does not mean that you are. And it's just, yeah. it's the fucking, it's the worst. I feel so bad for people who suffer with it. I really, I love that for them. I know. I would have loved to wear a bunch of goddamn stickers on my face in high school. I know. I, I need, wear them. I want bag stickers. I want ev- <laughs> like stickers for everything. I just, rem- I'll never forget. You ever remember like the worst like comments boys made about your face or like anything in high school? I remember this one time John Reinert was just like, Ugh. you look tired today. Oh, and I brother. just will never forget. And I remember my eyes were really puffy and I went and looked in the mirror and I was like, you're just it, like, it, I remember where it happened, where I was walking what I was wearing like you were in high school yeah that's so funny because like a tired high schooler that sounds like so, such a f- good look like <laughs> oh my god I'm like so into like when young people look tired I'm when like when they have a hoodie with their hood up and a coffee yeah and yes. cool. eyes are cool dark like that's so cool yeah. yeah sometimes I do look really young when I'm tired because my face is really puffy, puffy. I know yes. mm. sometimes I, <laughs> I like it now look. yeah okay you're like studying the trends on tic- like you're very active on TikTok. Yes. I'm Do you a feel loser. like it's good? No, you're not at all. I think it's cool. Like that what's going on on there? Like what are you looking at? Like what are what's like yeah, what's the latest? W- w- how are you feeling about Gen Z, Gen Alpha? I guess so wait, is the they're one Gen after Alpha them. now? No, that's after Gen that's Z. Oh my god, one. there's another one? Yeah. yeah. I didn't know that existed. Yeah. It seems like people are really like all of the things that I always thought were in style are cool, but apparently weren't but it's like being really authentic and honest and open about your flaws and also like being like budgeting out loud is like a new topic so it's like being instead of quiet luxury which like we're moving away from already like mm-hmm. that doesn't think the trends move so fast yeah now that it's like you'll be dizzy if you try to keep up which there was a minute where I was like oh I'll buy this and, and then now I'm just like no whatever I, I can't keep up but like Budgeting out loud is very popular. Being like vocal about things you can't afford or like how you're trying to save money and not being embarrassed of that. Because don't you guys feel like the last like five, ten, whatever years, it was all about like I've got the Louis Vuitton and I'm rich and this and that and just showing that Uh off. That's like icky now. I think that's great. I know we need that. I know it's so much better. Like we need rap songs about that. (laughs) Yeah, saving saving money. Five dollars almost. My yacht and layaway. I know we need <laughs> little Dicky. We need a Jewish rapper. Right, to, to little Dicky probably already did that. <laughs> now to think about it. Yeah. Okay. Little that's Dickie. interesting. That they're being they're. It's cool now to be like careful about money. Yeah. And I how th- because there's no other way. We're not going to survive unless we get cool about no being. No one has less. money. No there's one. no money left. No. no. <laughs> The so these people. kids are just walking around with like pimple faces talking about how they're poor. <laughs> yeah, this is what's very cool, guys. Trust me. I'm not trying to sabotage you but at all. Young kids love Sephora now. Like aren't 10 year olds like yes. populating Sephora now? Which, aren't they obsessed with skincare? What's that about? Okay, so this is a surprise. 
this is like surprising people, which I'm not surprised by this at all. Don't you feel like when you buy makeup and skincare, it's just like buying toys? Polly Pocket. Yes. Mm. Yes. Like, of course, the 10 year olds are going crazy They're at Sephora. They're little like Barbie accessories. They're all in a beautiful, like girly packaging. It's made it's, for kids. They care is for love kids. Opening and closing something, and a little uh, there's a little brush that comes with it. Yes, it's like little pet shop, like little thing. It's <laughs> totally made for little kids. It's collectibles. It's fun. Yes. Like I am not surprised by this at all. And I think like also for me, what got me really into skincare, like in the you know. 2015 16s was like I got really bad anxiety when there was all the like mass shootings and stuff and I just felt like oh I don't want to go out I don't want to do anything and so like watching skincare videos on YouTube became Calmed very you. soothing mm -hmm. and this like form of self-care but I personally do not believe in any of it anymore I just watched a clip of you <laughs> on Whitney's podcast and you don't moisturize I don't do you lotion your body yes because because I'm part of the problem because it's like deal it's like chapstick I wouldn't need it if I didn't do it once so I because don't I believe started, that mm. one though I don't use chapstick and sometimes I'm a little chapped up but like I never use chapstick I, I never use I, it I, I, I do I believe that you get like your body gets used to it then it yeah, gets dry it needs faster it. like uh, if I if, if I go I could rid myself of the need of lotion if I went months without it I do believe that. But because I've used it, I need it, and my skin will be so flaky and dry and disgusting. Like, what, do you, what lotion do you use? I just use whatever. I, I, for a while, I was on this stuff that smells like medicated because I had like bumpy skin. I come love called M lactin. Too. Okay, mm. and that stuff was really good for like Rosebud Baker turned me onto that years ago. But I just I use like her. whatever the I just take hotel lotions and use those just body yeah. lotion and I really just do my legs that's where it really needs it arms nuts that's how I know because I don't do anything to my arms and my arms are fine and I wonder dry. if this is spray mm. tan related this is like a spray tan maintenance thing that you're doing I definitely have to do lotion for spray tan but I don't get them all the time but do you not like what do you, what's your skincare routine for your face and I'm going to ask you the same thing Brian because I, Brian you have amazing skin you do have really you good re skin. don't pull it out like that are you 13 you doesn't he have great skin it's like supple. It has like such a good coloring to uh -huh. it. Yeah. There's no blemishes. It's really good skin. You have great face skin. So what do you, Brian, we'll start with you. What yeah. do you do? Um, well, I, I just put moisturizer on it and I. What but, kind? Um, keels. I, Men love keels. I know. Uh, I don't it's know what that is. Throwback. Maybe I need that because my, the moisturizer that I've been using um, is no longer being made. And I have like three bottles left and it's going to run out. Okay. What is it? It's just like a standard, probably like. I don't know, like Neutrogena might as well be. Sure. Some standard or o Olay. Okay. Some standard brand that has like nothing in it that's like dermatologist approved, gotcha. with no scent. And I put it on my face and it does like probably nothing. Like night and day? And do you wear sunscreen? Only after I shower and I just don't go in the sun. I think that's what it is. Right. I have low me. vitamin D. I have to take vitamin D pills. Same. The doctor me said too. you don't go in the yeah. sun enough. Yeah. I think everyone has I think I, I think everyone should take vitamin D pills. No, I'm special. <laughs> my my doctor said uh, I, I have another thing, that, but that I, methylfolate I have to take. It's so weird to see like on your thing that like and one vitamin D uh, for the rest of your life, <laughs> just for the rest of your life as like a supplement is just scary. But yeah, got it. In the summer, I could take off a little bit, but I don't think yeah. so because I wear SPF too much. It covers it all up. What do you do for your skincare? I'm doing very little right now because pregnancy has just like made me not care about anything. Oh, that's so interesting. All my friends are not doing anything that are pregnant because they're scared of putting chemicals in their body. <laughs> and you're just like, it makes me not care. They like won't touch any. They won't. Really? They won't wear Can like Lululemon leggings because there could be plastic in the leggings <laughs> oh and my stuff. God. Like they're at that level. Yeah. I mean, it, it, fertility stuff scares every w women of a certain age. Every just, like, fetus that gets tested has plastic in it. Like yeah. there's no yeah. escaping it. So I'm just like, chill about that um i am eating fish i am also controversially eating sushi there's a lot of research that like that's not like basically there's all these rules about pregnancy and they're just like these really strict rules mm -hmm. that no one has like looked into in a, for a while and there's this book expecting better by emily oster that she kind of like busts the myths okay. so i'm i'm having have you been like eating peanut butter yeah, why? Well, I believe that should. parents should eat peanut butter to, to give their believe. kids um, an immunity to peanut allergies. But it's so, not based on no science at all. I've all actually right. heard that, but I'm like, how, is that does that mean that like all peanut allergies are just because mommy didn't crave peanut butter? When I she think, and you don't, and they don't feed the kids peanut butter also, and then they grow up, they they turn six and they go to kindergarten and they're all exposed to it, peanuts it. for the first time in their lives, okay. and their body's not used to it, and they have a reaction. 
Oh, we'll I don't get know if that's true or not. That's probably a complete anti-science yeah. lie. <laughs> but I do believe you should be eating gobs of peanut butter every day to avoid if your... If you're a pregnant woman. Okay. Yes. Well, yes. we'll get you some on the way up. Uh... What do you what do you do for skincare normally? I'm just fascinated. very little. So I, as you know, and you were a guest on, I used to host a skincare podcast called Glowing Up with Caroline Goldfarb, who I yeah. know you love and love. loves you. Um, and after like five years of just trying every product, reading about, researching, being obsessed, I'm like, I don't. I the opposite effect happened to me. I don't believe in any of it. <laughs> I think there's like some science that like vitamin C serums are good for whatever, but an SPF obviously, but like I almost do next to nothing. Like I will at maybe like do a little oil cleanser to get the makeup off the face. Yeah. Maybe even just like wipe it with a toner and micella water. Yeah. Maybe an oil if I'm feeling a little dry, yeah. but I'm I Nikki. I'm so I I gotta be so low maintenance. Yes, mm. I hate maintenance. Me too. And you're gonna I run hate... out of time once you have the baby. It's like all that time runs away. I know. I just bought one of these solo wave things that you like. Oh, I have that. You're the supposed red to light. do like ten minutes a day, and even that I haven't even done it once. Well, and I'm supposed mm. to be doing it every single day. Okay, so, so like, I can't do this stuff. I have that, and then I was like immediately, I'm like, why don't I just have a red light mask? This is. I know. Now I have to like comb over it. I know. So then I just stopped using it. I never got the red light mask, but I just. I had one of those. I just give them to my sister eventually. And then she doesn't <laughs> use them. And then she's going to pass them down to her daughter who won't use them. But uh, yeah, I do this. I just use one serum and that's all I use. And I, I wash my face every night. And then I don't wash my face in the morning anymore because Salma Hayek said she did it. And so that gave me license to stop washing my face in the morning because you want to have the natural oils. Agreed. And then just put uh, and mm. then an SPF. It's like it's so simple. But I do get laser facials. I do get micro needling. I do get all that stuff. And micro Botox needling and is the one that I'm very. Into. I keep saying I want to do it because that's the one that seems like it has some scientific backing. I think mm. they definitely do. Yeah. I mean, there are certain celebrities that have good. amazing, amazing skin tone, and it's like it's got to be that stuff. It's nothing topical. I just am not buying it. That's how I feel. Don't don't spend any more than ten dollars on whatever you use on your face. I think it's. I think mm. uh, the stuff I use is eight bucks, and it, I will use it for life. There's no. I'm never gonna change. I know. Like unless. It's it's like oh I love the way this smells and how it f makes me feel like that's sure. kind of what I'm looking for if there's like a feel good experience but I'm with you like I just kind of don't buy into it anymore maybe it's like our age we've just like seen it all mm -hmm. I also think like diet is oh yeah like, and water which water. I can't seem to do that I hate water I know so, dry skin starts from within yes that's the true. thing that Gosh, people if say this is, if there's anything we've learned here today that's like it's what's inside that counts yeah <laughs> For your to make your outside great, and I went the to really the count. dermatologist today. No way! Right before I got what here. What for? Just I go, I go yearly to get checked, everything checked out. Good Did they on say you. you had great? Well, face it's just interest. No, it's just interesting uh -huh. when you go to the dermatologist. They just go through your over your body and they point out all the things that are wrong with mm -hmm. it. Yeah. They go like, oh, you got a rash, you got a mole there. Your your hand, you you're washing older. your hands too much. You need to use a different shampoo. And it's like, There's so many new growths that show up as yeah. you age. I know. News, I, like I have a skin tag on my thigh that I just like pulling at, <laughs> and I don't even want it to go away. I like like it. Like when I'm stressed out in bed, I like like just play with it. Oh. Not a bad, it's not a skin tag. It's like a little. It's not. It's that's. I shouldn't have said that, but it's it's gross. But it's International Women's Day, so I feel free <laughs> that I can talk about it because I do believe it's a female skin tag. But um, <laughs> it's just like gross sprouts overnight. And then you took a picture of me at the game where I'm like with binoculars, and I see these three lumps on the side of my face, little bumps. And I go, I gotta go to the dermatologist to like. W w I don't want those anymore. And I just never even thought to go to the dermatologist. I just go to a esthetician. I never mm. thought like I should go and get the like health of my skin checked out, <laughs> not just the aesthetics. Well, even though this is aesthetic. Go. In LA though, you go to the dermatologist and it's not like how it was back in the Midwest. They're like, now do, would you like to see what we could do to inject you? And like, I'm like, I didn't ask for that. Like this is- This is supposed to be a doctor. I yes. know. So it's, it's all the it's same at this point. Okay, that's good to but know. But one time I went, I had this rash on my stomach and not to brag um and i went to the dermatologist and she's like looking at my stomach and she's like oh this looks like secondary syphilis what the whoa f and i i was like i have an std that i missed the whole <laughs> first round of it <laughs> and i'm on to the <laughs> second secondary. round i was so freaked out it wasn't that but like there was a day where i was like i i'm 
Wow, I'm living a dumpster life. Was it true? No, it wasn't that. Okay, I don't know. It, was, it was just literally That's like nothing. so rude. Yeah, what a thing to say. <laughs> you don't even have the, the original version. No, I know. You have the sequel. Yeah. And you're so, it's so awful. I just missed a whole version. Syphilis too. Um, I love you so much, Esther. Thank you for being here I for love this special you. show. I mentioned at the start of the show, this is the Nikki Glazer Podcast, and we are a part of the International Women's Day celebration this week. And for the more programming honoring the incredible women at the network and worldwide, head over to iHeart Podcast International Women's Day feed by searching Women Take the Mic. Wherever you look for your podcasts, we are featured alongside um, such shows as Dear Chelsea, you know that, Chelsea Handler Show, and very special episodes with Dana Schwartz. That's Women and take the mic on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. Esther, um, I love you so much. Thank you for coming on Eight Months Pregnant. Thank I, when you I asked for you to be here, me. I was like, there's no way. And you said yes. And you drove all the way here. And I love you so much Thank for it. Thank you. And I'm so sad that you're going to be out of town for my movie premiere. I know. Oh, my God. Can we talk about that? You have a new movie coming out called Drugstore June. Which we tried to get you in, but you were busy you on tour. But you have to be in the so next nice. one. I would love to. I can't one. wait to see this. You got to check out the trailer for Drugstore June, Esther's new movie coming out. Um, when is it coming out? And where can people find It'll it? Because be I cannot wait to see this. Select theaters February 23rd. That's that cool. will wow. expand. Expanding cities March first. It's my birthday. Oh my, mine's March second. Oh my yeah. god, twin. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm really excited for people, people to see it. I know you'll love it. Also, I when you were on my show alone together, it was the best day of my life. You're such a funny actress. Like I'm gonna make you be like a movie star. Like you, I know you never wanna do stuff because you're just like you just want to be you. You made me feel so good that day because you are such She's a naturally so amazing actress. I can't wait to see you in this. Her improv is. So and thank good. you for asking me to be in your movie. That was so nice. I wish I could have made that day work because I. I'm, I can't wait to see the, the next movie. One. I'm gonna, be, you're gonna, whatever I'm doing next, you're, we'll, I'm going to plan it. Can we write a movie together? I just want to yes. work with you all the time. Yes. Let's let's actually okay, talk about we're that. We're going to start that okay, right good. now. All right, guys. Thank you for listening to the podcast. Don't be good. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.